Welcome to Brain Fitness in the Aluminum Age. Alzheimer's research has reached a tipping point. We now know that aluminum accumulation in the brain is a causal factor of Alzheimer's disease. I'm Dennis Krauss, and I've written a book on preventing Alzheimer's. I'm Laurie Adamson, Dennis's wife. We are going to talk about how to eliminate aluminum accumulation in your brain to keep your brain fit and prevent Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's disease starts 5 to 20 years before the first noticeable symptoms. It is a terminal disease that slowly progresses in stages. During these stages, aluminum is killing neurons in our brain faster than the brain can create replacements. In response to this threat, we need to prevent aluminum from entering our bodies by lowering our aluminum ingestion, absorption, and inhalation. The best way to do this is to identify the daily sources of aluminum and then do our best to avoid them. A little bit of aluminum every day can lead to a large amount of accumulated aluminum in the brain. It is estimated that 4% of the aluminum you ingest today will still be in your body 50 years later. This slide gives an overview of daily sources of aluminum that include drinking water, pharmaceuticals, antiperspirants, baking powder, and food dyes. There are three ways aluminum gets into our drinking water. First, many towns and cities use alum, which is an aluminum salt as part of their drinking water purification process. Second, pipes that carry drinking water are lined with mortar and drinking water leaches aluminum from the mortar. Thirdly, acid rain leaches aluminum from soil, and this aluminum ends up in our water supply. One of the criteria for proving aluminum is a causal factor for Alzheimer's is that the dosage of aluminum is correlated with the relative risk of Alzheimer's. The residential drinking water history for 600 people, some with and some without Alzheimer's, was collected over a 10-year period prior to their death. As shown in the first column of this table, the aluminum in their drinking water varied from less than 100 to more than 175 micrograms per liter. After death, their brains were autopsied, checking for plaques and tangles to evaluate the progression and severity of Alzheimer's. The data from this study proves causality by strongly correlating the dosage of aluminum with the relative risk of Alzheimer's as shown in the second column of this table. The bad news is drinking water in the United States that has been treated with alum contains on average 179 micrograms per liter of aluminum. As shown in the last row of the table, this level of aluminum increases the rate of Alzheimer's by 7.6 fold. The good news is a Brita water filter removes aluminum from drinking water without removing beneficial silica. Foods contain, containing alum should be avoided. Alum is an aluminum salt. It is an improved food additive despite the fact that it is both toxic to neurons in your brain and causes Alzheimer's. Alum is found in baking powder, pickles, pancakes, and baking mixes. As a youngster, I loved eating my mother's and grandmother's homemade pickles as they were so crunchy. I recently asked my mother for the recipe. I was surprised to find that alum was used for added crunch. Also surprising is finding that alum is an ingredient in some sweet gherkins and hamburger dill chips in my supermarket. A daily diet of pancakes, waffles, muffins, or biscuits increases the risk of Alzheimer's by 760%. This is because most commercial baking powder contains alum. When I discovered that alum is used in baking powder, I was curious to find out when it was introduced. Before 1900, the most popular brand of baking powder was Royal Baking Powder. This contained cream of tartar and not alum. After 1900, Calumet introduced double-acting baking powder that contained alum. It quickly became the most popular brand. I have analyzed baking powders and found that even those claiming to be aluminum-free are contaminated with some aluminum. I recommend using old-fashioned cream of tartar baking powder. Make your own aluminum-free baking powder. The recipe can be found in my book or on the web. 
Aluminum cookware was first introduced to housewives at the 1901 Pan American Exposition in New York. It took a while to catch on, but it's become the most popular cookware used today. When exposed to acidic food or fluoride containing water, the aluminum cookware corrodes, releasing aluminum into the food and water. The best advice is to not use aluminum cookware, but instead use glass, stainless steel, cast iron, or enamel coated cookware. Every summer my mother harvested tomatoes from her garden to make tomato juice. She unknowingly made neurotoxic tomato juice as it was cooked in a large aluminum kettle. She's been doing this since I was a youngster and now the inside of the kettle is badly pitted and her brain is suffering the consequences. Several years ago I replaced the old aluminum kettle with a non-aluminum kettle and have convinced her to use it for making her tomato juice. Beverage cans are a source of aluminum. In order to prevent the corrosion of aluminum cans by the beverage they contain, manufacturers line the inside of cans with an enamel coating. Unfortunately, no coating is pinhole free and corrosion still occurs, adding aluminum slowly to the beverage. If the can becomes dented and the coating cracked, aluminum quickly corrodes, adding aluminum to the beverage. When purchasing a beverage in an aluminum can, drink it. Do not store it. The best advice is when given a choice, buy beverages in glass. Some antacids are a daily source of aluminum. My father-in-law periodically takes daily doses of antacid to stop his heartburn. He is not alone as 20% of the population suffers weekly from acid reflux. One of the most common treatments for this problem is antacids. Some antacids use aluminum hydroxide as the active ingredient. These antacids are converted in the stomach to aluminum salts that are more easily absorbed. The best advice is to use antacids with calcium carbonate as the active ingredient. Another daily source of aluminum is food dyes. The aluminum used as an ingredient in these products is listed as aluminum lake. These dyes can be found in food and pharmaceuticals. I found aluminum lake in the coating used on my daily dose of thyroxin. I switched to a non-colored pill that I cut in half for the correct dosage. My friend found aluminum lake in the coating of a multivitamin that he immediately returned to the store. Carefully read the ingredients of any colored pill you take on a daily basis to avoid aluminum lakes. Here you can see examples of pastry and candy that contain lakes as food dyes. The amount of aluminum in these products is surprisingly high. These levels are 10 to 30 times higher than levels of aluminum in drinking water that have been shown to cause an elevated risk of Alzheimer's. Since learning that aluminum lakes are toxic to neurons, we decided to go candy free this Halloween. Instead of candy, we gave out plastic spiders and eyeballs that were well received by trick-or-treaters. Daily use of antiperspirants have been linked to an increased risk of Alzheimer's because most of them contain aluminum. Some antiperspirants and deodorants use deceptive labeling as to their uh, aluminum content. For instance, when alum is an ingredient, it is sometimes advertised as a natural mineral salt. That sounds safe, but it's not, as alum is an aluminum salt. Read the ingredients on labels carefully. Avoid aluminum and alum. Here are three deodorants that are aluminum free. Arm & Hammer Essentials, Tom's of Maine deodorant, and Schmitz. In order to keep your brain fit in the aluminum age, you may need to modify your lifestyle to avoid Alzheimer's disease. There are things we do every day that unknowingly are increasing the risk of Alzheimer's disease. By being informed, we can make choices to take action and change these things for the better. I recommend seven lifestyle choices for brain fitness. Stop smoking, drink in moderation, avoid aluminum ingestion, increase dietary silica, aerobically exercise regularly, get a good night's sleep, 
And lastly, avoid head trauma. Let's have a closer look at these lifestyle choices. Most importantly, stop smoking. A study of thousands of people over a 35 year period showed that smoking two packs of cigarettes a day between ages 50 and 60 doubles the risk of Alzheimer's between 70 and 85. There is 0.1% to 0.4% aluminum in tobacco and cannabis. Some of this aluminum is volatilized during smoking. This volatile aluminum is either absorbed by the lungs or diffuses through the olfactory neurons directly to the olfactory bulb of the brain. Hallmarks of Alzheimer's appear in the olfactory bulb of the brain and could account for the increased risk of Alzheimer's due to smoking. Keeping your heart healthy keeps your brain fit. Drinking alcohol routinely increases your risk of high blood pressure, stroke, and Alzheimer's. If you do drink alcohol, I recommend as a lifestyle choice, drinking in moderation. I recommend drinking one glass of wine, one ounce of spirits, or one bottle of beer at a time, and only a few times a week. Avoiding aluminum ingestion is an important lifestyle choice. Here are some ways to lower your aluminum intake. Filter drinking water. Use a water filter to remove aluminum from your drinking water. The filter should remove aluminum, but not silica. Dennis tested a number of filters, and the only filter that meets this criterion is the Brita pitcher style filter. Dennis also tested drinking water from several towns for aluminum. The town we live in does not treat drinking water with alum while the town my in-laws live in does treat with alum. Our town has 17 micrograms of aluminum per liter, while my in-laws drinking water has three times that level. My in-laws now use a Brita filter and we travel with one. Read labels. If they say aluminum or alum as an ingredient, don't buy them. Be a demanding consumer. Here's an example of what I mean. We wanted my mother-in-law's 90th birthday cake to be aluminum free. Normally, a birthday cake is loaded with aluminum. Bakers normally use frosting with aluminum lake and baking powder with alum. Being a demanding consumer, we made many phone calls until we finally found a baker willing to take on the challenge of making an aluminum free cake. She used natural food dyes and cream of tartar baking powder. A stainless steel pan was used and a beautiful, delicious, aluminum-free cake was produced. My mother-in-law loved it. I encourage you to talk with your local baker so you can also enjoy aluminum-free baked goods. Drinking water and eating foods high in silica is another important lifestyle choice. This will keep your brain fit by increasing aluminum excretion and thereby decreasing aluminum accumulation. It is recommended that dietary silica needs to be supplemented with three to four cups of Fiji water or homemade silica water every day. Sources of dietary silica include whole grains, vegetables, and products of grains such as beer. When purchasing cereal, oatmeal, bread, flour, and brown rice, look for the words whole grain. The husks and skins of some vegetables and most grains are removed by processing prior to sale. The parts removed are the parts containing most of the silica. String beans and some peas are an exception as we eat the shells. A study of dietary habits of men and women revealed that women get most of their silica from string beans and bananas, while men get their silica primarily from beer and bananas. When I told an acquaintance that beer is a source of silica, he introduced me to his favorite non-alcoholic beer. The good news is that drinking a non-alcoholic beer also works well with that lifestyle choice of drinking in moderation. Regular aerobic exercise should be built into your lifestyle. In order to make exercise most beneficial to your brain, your heart rate should be 
at 60 to 75 percent of your peak heart rate reserve for 40 minutes at least three times a week. Before beginning an exercise program, check with your doctor as he may recommend a stress test. Performing aerobic exercise regularly improves and cleanses the brain. Four chemicals are produced during aerobic exercise, PYY, neprilicin, BDNF, and norepinephrine. PYY has been shown to decrease aluminum accumulation in the brain by 86%. Neprilicin is activated for cleansing the brain of plaque. BDNF promotes creation of new neurons for storing memories. And finally, norepinephrine improves working memory for decision making. A recent study of aerobic versus non-aerobic exercise on hippocampal volume was conducted. Hippocampal volume is related to memory capacity of the brain. Two groups of 65 to 70 year olds were paid to exercise for 40 minutes, three days a week for one year. The first group exercised non-aerobically and on average lost 1.4% of their hippocampal volume. The second group exercised by aerobically walking on an average gained 2% of their hippocampal volume. In the second group, their increased level of serum BDNF correlated with their increased hippocampal volume. This proves that BDNF is like miracle growth for your brain. And aerobic exercise reverses hippocampal atrophy by increasing BDNF. Get a good night's sleep, as sleep also cleanses the brain. During sleep, the neurons in the brain change shape, increasing the fluid-filled space between neurons by 60%. This facilitates removal of unwanted chemicals and metabolites from the brain. Sleep also consolidates long-term memories. Lastly, avoid head trauma, as it has been shown to lead to a 50% increased risk of dementia. There is a barrier between the brain and blood that protects the brain from toxic chemicals. Although aluminum can slowly sneak through this barrier, head trauma breaks down the barrier, allowing aluminum a faster path for entry into the brain. In order to slow aluminum accumulation in the brain, avoid falls as they cause two-thirds of all head trauma. In order to avoid falls, my in-laws have replaced their throw rugs with ones that have a rubber backing that sticks to the floor. In conclusion, for brain fitness in the aluminum age, make a list of lifestyle choices and a schedule of when you plan to start. Choices that are most important include aerobically exercising regularly and adding dissolved silica to your diet and drinking water. Also take action and encourage your local water department to add soluble sodium silicate to public drinking water for both public health and corrosion resistance. Also, make a list of your suspected daily sources of aluminum intake. Take action to replace them one at a time. One important step Lori and I took was to make our own baking powder. Yes, I love to bake and Dennis loves to eat. Baked goods prepared with store-bought baking powder are a major source of aluminum. For instance, the muffins I made contain 20 milligrams of aluminum per muffin. This is 200 times higher than the safe aluminum level in a quart of drinking water. We now bake with homemade aluminum-free baking powder. We only purchase prepared baked goods that have been made with non-aluminum containing leavening agents or yeast. We appreciate you watching our video. We hope the information helps you, your loved one, or a friend who may have memory loss or Alzheimer's. For more information on aluminum being the cause of Alzheimer's, see our video, Brain Fitness in the Aluminum Age, titled Preventing Alzheimer's. Dennis has written a book on preventing Alzheimer's that goes into more depth and is available on Amazon. And thank you for watching.